Welcome to In the Spotlight. I'm Eric Townell, and my guest today is Clyde Morgan, Clyde Alafiju Morgan, who is an actor and dancer and artist. Welcome, Clyde. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's good to see you again after uh, several, well, several weeks now that uh, we had the opportunity to work together. All right. And I first met you as a dancer, really. You were uh, artistic director of the Sankofa African Dance and Drum Ensemble. Is this correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a position that I held for 26, 27 years. And it was a wonderful time. No. I'm retiring now because oh. it's, it's that time, <laughs> you know. Uh, I had 27 years mm -hmm. at uh, the college at Brockport mm -hmm. in that position. Seven years at the University of Wisconsin between oh. Madison and Milwaukee, I see. doing African dance and performing a great deal. Uh -huh. And 10 years at the Federal University of Bahia in Brazil, directing a company there for the government. So um, added up, <laughs> 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 that's a lot of water over the dam. <laughs> water over the dam. Well, thank you for your leadership in the arts here in Western New York for all these years. Really, it's a generation of people who came through your teaching. I have a large staff of people and mm -hmm. supporters that have made that possible. An administrative staff mm -hmm. at the college, mm -hmm. fellow faculty members, mm -hmm. interdepartmental exchanges, because we, uh, particularly with the African component, uh -huh. shared majors with African and African American studies. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, that's the way the African dance program began. Uh -huh. And it was transferred into the dance department because the dance department had the facilities, the physical facilities. Oh, right, 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 right. And the African and African American studies mm -hmm. had the historical academic wherewithal oh, to make I it see. possible. Right. So they came together uh -huh. and uh, made a mutual arrangement that's been very good and very profitable for everyone. Right, and, and for those who don't know, that's been at the college at Brockport, part of the SUNY system. Correct. Now, was this the first African dance uh, program in the SUNY system? It was the most authentic. I see. And this was one that was agreed upon by the chancellor at that time, the uh -huh. president of the university, and the government of Ghana. Uh -huh. This was shortly after the Nkrumah presidency, and it was shortly after the liberation of uh, Ghana, mm -hmm. and when it became truly a university of world renown. Most of the exchanges at that time between Ghana and the West was with Great Britain. And the United States became a very, I don't want to say comfortable, but a very uh, worthwhile engagement because we have a larger number of universities to which many of the Ghanaians came uh -huh. and wherein African dance was established. I see. Because hither to that, it was fringe groups here and there, authentic of course, uh -huh. but not with university and official status. Uh -huh. Professor um, Okoye, deceased now, Professor Okoye introduced African dance and brought in Professor Opoku from the African Studies Department at the University of Ghana uh -huh. at Lagon. Uh -huh. So when I say the most authentic, it's because what they brought was a clear connection, institutional connection that the SUNY system was the first to truly embrace and to support and continues to support. Uh -huh. And I, uh, I think they have bragging rights in that regard uh -huh. because not only do they deal with dances and culture from Ghana, but from the whole of Africa as well as the African uh -huh. diaspora. Uh, yes, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. The culture that's been transferred to other parts of the world. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. And there are so, so many manifestations of that and we're best to welcome it then at a university and particularly a university in, New, in the state of New York. In the state of New York, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. But you might have expected that in Manhattan, but it's, it's wonderful that it's here in western New York. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And many of, our, many of our trainees, many of our graduates, of course, go to New York uh -huh. and from there go on to other companies. And many of them come from abroad. 
oh, okay. and spent some time in New York City before going back to their native countries uh -huh. and have not only a degree from our college, but experience within the New York cultural complex and then back to their own countries for uh, involvement, renewal, replenishing. Uh -huh. For example, we have an exchange program with the University of the West Indies. Uh -huh. The campus in Jamaica is one of the principal ones that we have a strong connection huh. with. Part of that has to do with Garth Fagan. I see. Uh -huh. Garth being uh, uh, born in Jamaica, yes. representative of the Jamaican culture, mm -hmm. strongly involved with the SUNY system before having his own company. Uh -huh. And it was Garth's encouragement that made me want to be a part of the faculty here. And so that, along with the fact that the University of the West Indies and the Sister Cities program, in other words, Western New York, mm -hmm. and that part of the Caribbean are sisters in the international community. I had no idea. Yes. Uh -huh. In the same way that um, California's Lo Los Angeles yes. is the sister city to Salvador Bahia, where I and my wife are uh, located. In Brazil. In Brazil. Uh -huh. And Bahia, the state of Bahia, is the sister to Pennsylvania. Oh. So through these Rotary Clubs and these Lions Clubs uh -huh. and these venues, we have an additional cultural component that keeps us very solid, which has helped with our department at uh -huh. College of Brockport, uh -huh. which reinforces Western New York's importance on the map. We're we're pretty far from things we're like we're seven hours from New York City, yeah. but we're only an airplane flight away and a telephone call away. Oh, isn't that marvelous? <laughs> and in a way, you've become the uh, arbiter of authenticity for people who study with you and then go back to other parts of the world to, yes. to deliver what you've taught them. Yes, and one of the interesting things, Eric, is that many times we will get students uh -huh. from the continent of Africa who've come here to study nursing, economics, law, etc. And many of them have never had dancing, practice in <laughs> dancing. And they come here and they get involved <laughs> with the African dance company and the African dance class and music, etc. Many of them who would never have studied drumming in their own countries because it wasn't valued uh -huh. as uh, at that certain cultural level. I see. They're very British. And being very British, uh, their whole educational outlook is something that did not necessarily embrace African drumming and dancing. <laughs> and why would you go to college for that when you have it in your backyard? <laughs> Absolutely. So what we've done is to introduce many of the Africans to what is essentially their own culture at a different level, interlacing it with other African cultures that they would not know in their own country. I mean, very seldom does a Ghanaian student know anything about the dancers from Kenya. Yes, a different side of the continent. Exactly, uh -huh. and so that's what we're involved with at the university. And so what do we do? We ask them if they know any songs or dances from their own region, authentic things, nursery rhymes, mm -hmm. something kids they grew games, up with. Yes. things that they grew up with. Uh -huh. And my job is to convert this material. I, you know, I do the same kind of thing that uh, Carl Orff did. Uh -huh. Collect an indigenous exactly. uh, vernacular. As soon as they walk through the door, that's what I want to know. What do you know? And you don't have to know what we know. I want to know what you did when you were a kid. And transmit the oral history, in other words. Exactly. Which reinforces the value from whence they came. Uh -huh. And it gives it a level at the university level that enriches us, enriches everything. It's uh, a win-win situation oh, having brilliant. our foreign, foreign students. And the best place uh, to happen in the university where they can be exposed to a lot of different in Exactly. Instances. And there's a certain, there's a certain uh, lack of pressure, lack of professional pressure I see. here that you would experience in New York. New York is great for professional pressure, but sure. you don't need that when you're an undergraduate coming to the United States, English as a second language, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Brockport has been a very favorable place for that. Oh, that's marvelous. Now, you mentioned music. Uh, what about the music portion of it? The music portion of it. Let me back up a bit and yeah. talk about music at the SUNY yes. level. Before I was invited to the campus to uh, join the faculty, the orchestra, the Brockport Orchestra, had been retrenched, essentially. Mm. 
And so the only thing that was left of the uh, music department were a large number of orchestral instruments. Uh. And some of the music staff remained. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, uh, some of the pianists came over to the dance department as accompanist and remained employed at the university. And there's nothing like having an excellent concert oh. musician to accompany yeah, your absolutely. dance classes. True. And I had one or two of them to play for the class that I had to uh, uh, perform for uh -huh. in my interview process because I'm also trained in classical ballet as well as in modern dance. I see. Yeah, I trained with the Ballet Russe uh -huh. de Monte Carlo, and I danced with several modern companies, the Jose Limon Company in New York, for one. And so I had to be able to be involved, experienced, and perform in that idiom. So the orchestra went through its demise, but music on our faculty remained very strong. We have and had as many as four full-time musicians in my, the dance department. My, oh, and, no, in the dance department. In the dance department. Ah, that's remarkable. In addition to having an affiliation with the Arts for Children program, which had music in ah, their ah, own regard. Ah, yeah. And so Musically, we've been in good standing mm -hmm. on many levels. Mm -hmm. Most of the musicians have been a combination of pianists and uh, percussionists, uh -huh. as well as doing vocal work. Uh -huh. The man who has been my constant companion mm -hmm. for many years, Mr. Khalid Infali Abdul Salim, uh -huh. he's uh, a musician of extraordinary talent. He mm -hmm. came to us from uh, a variety of uh, African and African-American experiences. Oh, we have uh, Greg Ketchum, who is a long-standing musician on the faculty. Mm -hmm. And we've had many, many, many mm -hmm. others who've been just great. A lot of interdisciplinary respect. Ah, uh, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Interdisciplinary respect. For example, when we did the collaboration with the Oratorial Society, yes. It was recognized right away by the department as a whole that this was going to be one more adventure at the level, at the cultural and educational level that the department deserved and that we needed to involve ourselves with to make sure that that the Rochester connection yes. was being solidified. Wonderful and so musically, we have many guest artists that oh. come in in the modern dance uh, area which I, I don't teach modern dance that much anymore. I see. Hardly okay. ever. Uh -huh. There's so much to do in the African and Afro-Brazilian uh, yeah, yeah. work, uh -huh. and there are more than enough people to do the other. I see. But uh, we have many artists, uh, dance artists, who are dancer musicians who mm -hmm. come in, mm -hmm. principally from New York City. I see. We have one of those arts exchange programs that oh. have been very, oh. very, very useful. Uh, one of our retired professors, Jackie Davis mm -hmm. uh, has worked extensively with Art Force. Art Force. Okay. Yes, and they support artists from New York coming and doing visitations and oh, residencies. That's phenomenal. Helps us in two ways. It brings in talent that we ordinarily would not have yep. on our campus, and it gives our students exposure. Mm -hmm. And to access to access. After, after, their, after their college careers. Right. So uh, you mentioned our collaboration a while ago, which was terrific fun for all of us, but you had some very special drums on the stage at that point, some that you played yourself. Could you tell us about your drums? Yes. Let's back up again. <laughs> Historically, yeah. the drum collection that we have was a gift from the University of Ghana at Legon. The African Studies Department there makes their own drums, oh. as well as to do research in regions of Ghana where they bring master drum makers and drummers to their university. They're in residence. Mm -hmm. They teach their students the drum making, the drum playing, oh. and singing, etc. Yes. So okay. when dance was implemented at our campus, the government of Ghana sent a room full of <laughs> traditional drums. Oh, an extraordinary gift. And along with it, a master drummer who knew how to play them, a master dancer who knew how to dance with them, and a master artistic director. So three of them came, the artistic director, his lead dancer, and his lead drummer. 
And so that was when I say the authenticity of our program uh -huh. comes from those days uh -huh. when the entire system had that implantation. Since then, we've introduced a wide variety of other drums. Uh -huh. With someone like the uh, uh, Khalid Salim yes. came the djembe drum. Uh -huh. Now the djembe drum is very different because it, has, it comes from a different family of drums. It comes from those drums that are part of um, Guinea, Senegal, different, totally different from the Ghanaian drums, oh, totally different from the Congolese uh -huh. drums, totally different from the East African drums. So they all have these families of orientation, and we have a collection that represents them all. Wow. That's why it's important that we bring in uh, artists, collaborate with artists, and so the collaboration with you had to do with a form of drumming that we don't practice. Oh, I didn't realize that at the time. We don't practice, but we understand it. Yes, I see. But uh -huh. it's not part of our vocabulary. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, what's interesting about the work that you did and the Mi Saluba is that it is it has a religious and ethnic basis yes. that's very strong and very powerful and it has an authenticity and an inter a cultural interaction that's very rare. Because here we have the classical uh, Christian liturgy, the mass, the mm -hmm. formal mass, right. uh, interpreted by a group of people who sing in a different language. I don't even speak their language, mm. by the way. I, I, my first language is English, my second is French, my third is Swahili, and my fourth language is Portuguese. Mm. But I don't have uh, any knowledge of the language that they uh, speak. And the fact that they deal with the Catholic Mass, I'm not a Catholic by birth. Mm. <laughs> I was brought up in a in mixed household. I was brought up in a household of uh, Southern Baptists on one side and uh, Arabic or uh, Muslims on the other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I have uh, a, uh, that until I went to Brazil I see. and married into a Catholic family. Oh, interesting. My children were all born uh, and baptized in the Catholic religion. And since I've done so much work over the years, like over 40 years of involvement in Brazilian mm -hmm, culture, mm -hmm. where it's fundamentally Catholic, I've had uh, I've been inundated mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. the Catholic uh, culture. Yes. And being uh, an artist in my artistry, mainly in the Western tradition, I can't help but having a great involvement with uh, ecclesiastical art, Western art, you know. Now, so, now, uh, Clyde, I just wanted to ask you, uh, before we run out of time, it, you have left uh, the position of teaching at College of Brockport. Yes. Are you still working with the Sankofa African Dance and Drum Ensemble then? As a no, I'm not. Oh, I no, see. No, I'm not. What I do now, as a matter of fact, I brought one of the things for you mainly. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is an example of some of my artwork. Oh. That's the Sankofa bird, by the way. Oh, that, uh, the Sankofa bird. So this is a little bird. notebook for uh -huh. you to hold on Thank to. Thank you very much. And... Um, Beautiful. This, this is also the more recent Sankofa bird that I did. My, I'm oh, my. Leaving, I'm leaving this with you. Thank you so much. Talks about the group. What I do mainly now is to contract to do special jobs for, uh, as a choreographer, artistic director, etc. Uh -huh. And I'm devoting myself more and more to my own artwork. To your graphic art. My graphic artwork. Oh, I understand. And uh, I've exhibited here in uh, Rochester at, at the, uh, what is our famous museum? The... Uh, at the Memorial Art Memorial Art Gallery. Art okay, Gallery. Yes, I've uh -huh. had a one-man show there. Uh -huh. I've had a one-man show for at the Arts and Cultural Council uh -huh. and at the Baobab Center. So that's, and this is uh, another example of, uh, th that's one of the three magi that I did. I want uh -huh. you to keep that. Thank you so much. But uh, that's what I'm doing primarily now is working on many of the graphic projects some of it has to do with choreography. Mm -hmm. All of it has to do with uh, my personal history as an artist. Speaking of that personal history, now, did you perform in Africa as well as Brazil, or where did you get your African influences? Well, 
my, Af my first African influence came in Cleveland, Ohio at the Caramu House Theater. Oh. The Caramu House Theater is a theater in the community dedicated to the promotion of African arts and understanding of African culture. Uh -huh. That's where I began when I was uh, very young. I was six or seven years old. And I, I went to see, or they brought to s for us to see, Amal and the Night oh, Visitors. Oh, wonderful piece. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, Giancarlo Menotti. Okay. And so that's my history. I'm, I'm really uh, strong. I, I'm baptized in opera uh -huh. and uh, the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. <laughs> and so the Caramel House was an excellent opportunity to get to know African culture. Uh -huh. I joined the Jose Limon Company later and I went to Africa on uh -huh. a tour. I've crossed the continent performing primarily I see. and filming. And filming your performances, uh huh? No, not mine, theirs. Oh, I see. You were filming a filmmaker. traditional. Uh -huh. Right, filming traditional things. Coming back to New York, I had a chance to study this material. Yeah. And most of what I really know authentically, I know from what I filmed, but I was only able to study it when I got back to the States. That's a valuable trove of research that you Phenomenal. did. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then I got employed at the Federal University of Bahia. Mm -hmm. And there, along with my students, we would study these films and reproduce authentic dances with this company uh, that I per had. Fantastic. So that's, uh, that's the basis of it. Mm -hmm. Invited to the University of Wisconsin to do the same. And here in New York, part of the SUNY system, is where it all blossomed. Uh -huh. It'd be wonderful to see those films now and to preserve them somehow in a library exactly, or a collection for exactly. people to Exactly, and that's study. becoming more and more uh, precarious uh -huh. because uh -huh. of the fact that the, most of it was done in Super 8. Uh, yeah. And that that I haven't transferred already to VHS and later right. to DVD is getting old, it's getting brittle. Right. But here at Kodak, uh, with the Eastman House mm -hmm. and other places, I've been given information as to how to help preserve that. Even some of the old machinery that was used for projection is uh, no longer available. Oh, how about that? Mm -hmm. But uh, most of my work is authentic in that regard. I didn't have a chance to study a great deal while I was mm -hmm. in Africa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was mainly performing, lecturing, etc., and filming. Well, that's valuable documentation of the culture as it existed. Right. And much of that may be lost now. Exactly. The well, there are whole villages that no longer exist. Uh, I understand. I was there during the time when there was a war going on in Biafra. Oh. Many oh, of yes. the, you know, oh, you remember yes. that? You're Famous of that generation. Famine. Yes, Famous yes. Famine, yeah. And I was in Nigeria at that time oh, for a right. short time and uh, understood the trials and tribulations of warfare. Yes. And do a great deal in my own work. Uh, this word, alafia, mm -hmm. is a word for peace. And so we've worked very diligently in our artwork to promote that idea. And that's why I admire so much. Uh, some of the things that are done with peace art here. Ah, uh, yes. Uh -huh. Thomas right. Warfield. Thomas uh, and I are very good friends. Uh -huh. We've collaborated together. And uh, the idea of the promotion of peace through mm -hmm. art, mm -hmm. the promotion of, well, actually, the Misa Lubid is not a promotion of religion. It's a promotion of spirit. It's, it's, yeah. a, sp it's a spiritual well thing. Well said. Yeah, it's a, yes, it is. And so that's why I was interested in you and your work and uh, owe a great deal to that experience that we've had together. That was a magical time. Indeed. A magical time. And so now, um, in your graphic art, how do you plan to continue that? Will you be doing that on uh, Brazilian subjects or on local subjects? What moves you the most? I use, I work a lot of, uh, out of my imagination. While I was sitting out there in the lobby, I, I was doing some sketching. And I use, the fact that I was trained as an artist, I don't have, I don't have difficulties in reproducing. I work now out of my imagination and putting together, doing collages of things, putting elements together that are not always compatible, mm -hmm. but as they occur to me, and using mythological subject matter, uh -huh. particularly African mythological subject matter, which there is a lack of. Oh. For example, most of the wonderful comics that we have, the Dell comics, et cetera, et cetera, most of those are an old boys club. You know, mm -hmm. you don't see any uh, African or African-American heroes in those or mythology in that. Well, good point. And, you know, how, why should they? Uh -huh. They're that talking about, them, you yeah. know, they're talking about themselves. <laughs> and I need to talk about myself. Uh -huh. And that's what my artwork is intended to do. Uh -huh. uh, reflect upon my experience as a dancer mm -hmm. on the stage, what I would like to see on the stage and in cinema and in mm -hmm. uh, 
TV, mm -hmm. and my sons also work with me. They're also graphic artists. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, and my, my youngest son is a professional photographer in New York City. Mm -hmm. My second son is uh, a designer for the Levi Company in New York City. <laughs> wow. And my oldest son, who was my partner for many years, uh -huh. is also a graphic artist. Oh. And we all work in collaboration. So, so they, point, they point me in the direction. They say, Dad, you got to do this. <laughs> and I say, OK. Because uh, you know, it just flows. It, I, I'm easy with a pen and, and charcoal and all that and pencil. <laughs> so you've pointed the direction now uh, for Sankofa in its, in its future incarnations. How is that company going to continue, and what's their future um, going to look like? That's an excellent, excellent question, and one that I, uh, I'm glad to elaborate on in brief terms. Mm. Uh, the fact that it was so valuable to our department and to the university and to this whole region mm -hmm. and to the world of dance in general uh, the retired, not retired, he, he's gone on to another uh, university, Kevin Warner oh, yes. mm -hmm. and our dean, Darwin Prelo, mm -hmm. and the present head of the department, uh, Maura Keefe, they've already designated someone who will be directing the okay. new San so And remember that my musical director will continue. Aha. Uh -huh. The company continues then in the same guy. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the work that I had done so strongly is one of the things they're going to have to look into furthering involvement with people such as yourselves, mm -hmm. that whole periphery of artistic collaborations out there, Yes. and work with uh, institutions such as young audiences. Uh, okay. Young Audiences of Rochester was a saving grace to me. You know, it pulled me away from Brockport, put me into the whole Monroe County, uh -huh. and got me involved with the nationwide scope of young audiences, which began, first of all, with musicians such as That's yourself. True. Mm -hmm. And it's only now that they've expanded their menu to include puppet shows, rapping, African dance, Spanish dance, Chinese acrobats, you name it. But it all began with musicians, uh, orchestras, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. such as your involvement is. Mm -hmm. I was listening to the interview that you were doing earlier, and that one of the things that was very apparent in my youth was the coming of small ensembles to our elementary school. I remember the same thing, yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. And so now I do that, and I encourage that with our young dancers. That's a wonderful resource. Yep, that is just and so Monroe County has offered us a wealth of opportunities, and we have now many of our students who've graduated and gone on to teach there. Uh -huh. So Sankofa only needs to, you know, it's like riding a bicycle. <laughs> just keep pedaling. <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> and if true. you fall, you know, just get up and, and, and put it back and <laughs> pedal more. But don't try lying on your side to pedal because <laughs> <laughs> bikes never right themselves. <laughs> so there is, uh, there is life for Sankofa after Clyde Morgan. Oh, that is wonderful news. And it's been delightful to speak with you today. You're a wonderful <laughs> cultural resource to our whole region. My guest has been Clyde Alafiju Morgan, the uh, artistic director of the Sankofa African Dance and Drum Ensemble and longtime teacher of dance at the University of Brockport, professor of dance, and our wonderful chore choreographer and collaborator. And it's just been delightful to have you with us today, Clyde. Thank you so I've much. I've been looking forward to this while I was in Brazil. They said, well, you know, Eric wants to do this interview. I said, great. He's the person that I'd like to talk with on the air. Thank you very much. You're welcome.